place is just breathtaking. Makes me wonder what the story was of the ship, if the people lived or not. I would imagine they did because it's so close to shore. I can't quite go out there, it's too far to go out, but it's not too far for them to swim, so hopefully they made it. I'm just so, so grateful right now that I'm here. I just had this feeling and just desire to come here, in this place in the world. This is the, Namibia is the second to least populated country in the world, second to Mongolia. And so there are not very many towns, not very many people. So there's this ruggedness of the earth that I experience when I'm here. And apparently there are a lot of shipwrecks throughout the whole coast, especially up north where it's the skeleton coast. That's why they call it the skeleton coast. Um, um, one of the reasons at least. So I will show you around more. I hope you enjoy this just as much as I do. That was fun actually. <laughs> so this is what it's like where the desert meets the ocean. incredibly peaceful and grounded feeling. The silence is deafening. The sand is soft. So soft. Sand, oh. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know why. It feels so like nice and warm like a blanket. I'm not hot. I'm not cold. It's perfect temperature. Feels soft. It's not too dry. It's not too humid. It hasn't been very sunny because I think the marine layer from the the ocean keeps keeps um, keeps it a little bit foggy longer in the morning, and um, and yet the sand is is warm but not too warm. It was a little cool in the morning but not too cool. My eyes are like very. It feels bright, even though it's a little bit cloudy still, the sun's almost out and it feels really bright so I can barely keep my eyes open to look at you. So if I'm looking strange, that's why. <laughs> I love it here. I'm so glad I made this happen. that Namibia used to be part of South Africa and that they used it as an experiment 12 years before South Africa got rid of apartheid they got rid of it here and they started integrating and doing stuff 12 years sooner just a grounded friendly friendly country and my tour guide said that he only saw I'm the sixth American he's ever seen in his life. I don't know why we as Americans don't come to Namibia, but it's it's going to be on my top three lists if I ever want to bring friends and family somewhere to travel. This is highly recommended. capital of Namibia and the hotel I'm at has this great overlook it looks over the whole capital beautiful little city kind of small I think it's under 400,000 people and it's surrounded by mountains all around <laughs> and uh, the mountains that go around the whole city they create this wind that always is circulating throughout the city and thus its name which means corner of the wind I believe. The air is so nice here it's it, oh, it just it feels like desert air a little bit but it's fresh and kind of in the wind but the light wind just makes it 
smell and feel so good here. I was really hot earlier today, but it just got a little bit cooler, so I put on this sweater. But it does get quite warm during the day. The name of my hotel, Thule, they said means where imagination meets reality. This touched my heart so much and it really seemed like a breathtaking place where imagination meets reality. And I plan to adopt this in my future retreats. I've had a great week here in Namibia. I started here and then I ended here. The capital here, Windhoek, is almost exactly in the geographical center of the country. It's a vast country and Namib means vast, which makes sense. It's not too hot at all. Um, it's actually really nice, really nice temperature. I think it's about 28 degrees Celsius right now. The strange thing is I don't even know what that means in Fahrenheit. <laughs> I think that's like maybe maybe the late 80s <laughs> anyway it's a great temperature and it's very um, it's not humid so it feels a lot cooler and I'm about to go down that direction and find a craft market which I'm super excited about right now I am at the Museum of Independence very moving museum I learned a lot about what the country has gone through to become independent funny thing is today First Lady of the U.S., Dr. Jill Biden, is actually here in Namibia today. How did that happen? I arrived yesterday and there was a U.S. Air Force plane on the tarmac. We just kind of, we just walked on the tarmac um, to the airport to get our luggage. It's a pretty small airport and there's a U.S. Air Force plane there and I was thinking that's so strange and then it was very very strict to get through uh, custom or what is it passport control and whatever and I was wondering why and then finally the taxi driver told me that the first lady of the US is on her way here and I saw in the news that she's supposedly arriving today and then she's also going to Kenya afterwards which is funny because I'm going there too <laughs> this is coffins we don't it's have amazing. school. What was uh, your name again? I'm Aho Kalibasen. I come from Bushman land. Marisa Midro Kanya Kain Koas. Kaidugo. That's awesome. Yeah. And the last one is I D A P H N E. Uh, I. No, I. Just N. Okay. Def. Def. Ne. O N for Namibia. Uh huh. Okay. N for Namibia. That's great. <laughs> Middle, Makalani. Makalani. You can, take a, you can take a photo in Eve, England. Yeah, the list there. Uh, and you can even eat it. And at the end, I make again a hat. Oh, I love uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> this is the National Museum of Namibia. And that is their founding father, the first president. Statue in front. And this is the center of Windhoek, the capital of Namibia. went across the desert to the coast for a couple of days. I went to Swapakmund and stayed there, which is this German architecture town. This pier was one of my favorites. It shows just how strong the ocean is around here. The current comes up from Antarctica and this just shows why so many ships have crashed up along the skeleton coast which is not too far north of here. I love the artwork of this elephant. We saw some flamingos. Some of them were pink and some of them were white and the funny thing is that it depends on what they eat the pink ones eat this pink algae and the white ones eat shrimp and we saw some of the 
water with the algae that they eat and the water itself is also pink from the pink algae. Oh, what is there there? The Mile Springwalk. Springwalk. Ah, that looked like it was going to be sudden, but it was, it's okay. Our tour guide drove us up and down the sand dunes, and it would always startle me before we were about to drop because it looked like we were just going along the side, and then all of a sudden, there would be nothing in front and we'd just go over the the edge and it would be a 45 degree angle of drop and I would always wonder how we made it safely to the bottom. But our tour guide was really experienced in driving through these areas. <laughs> it always surprises me. Oh. <laughs> And then he had all this clap keep the Yeah. It's like an animal on the left. I mean, the animal tracks. Oh, he looks like a human dog. 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 Seeing the small flock of birds and their shadow on the sand as the only thing in the landscape besides the desert was one of my favorite moments. As so many landscapes, Etosha National Park up north has more green and is lush and has a lot of animals, especially in the summer where they all go to the watering hole and there's a big lake in Itosha. And then to the west of Itosha is Skeleton um, National Park, which is on the coast, obviously, the Skeleton Coast. I hope you enjoy Namibia with me. I'm only here a week this time, but man, I've got to come back. I have got to come back to this place because there's so much I haven't even seen yet. I've been to the west coast and I've been here to the capital and in between. But there's so much north, so much south. There are so many tribes here, so many um, native groups of people that lived here peacefully, coexisted for so long. You know, to separate and conquer, that's why all of the different tribes had to stay in their sections, like, and not even mingle. They had to be back by a certain time at night. It was, it sounds very terrible. So, that obviously takes away power when people are not able to be united, but there was a lot of fighting back and, and recognizing uh, what was happening. So Namibia has been independent. There is a, a lot of history in the museums about that, about all that Namibia has gone through, the different peoples in, within Namibia to become independent. It's a country full of an amazing natural resources. I think the most expensive diamonds in the world, amazing diamonds come here from here. There are, um, there's lithium, there's copper that I drove by yesterday. Their oil has just been discovered here. So, uh, but there's a shortage of water because it's a desert. It's a little bit like California here, but there's a shortage of water, so uh, we're hoping with all of the, diff the it's probably going to attract a lot of people with the oil and all these resources, a lot of natural, na a lot of natural resources. So hoping that Namibia, Namibia will stay wonderful and um, that all the new people coming in that are going to be discovering this gorgeous corner of the earth will not spoil it and it will stay beautiful and gorgeous like this and when I say beauty, beautiful and gorgeous that sounds like a really surface level word but from the top down whether it's from the culture 
or the natural resources or the nat the nature um, everything Ostrich is running away from us. <laughs>